For the past five days, I've traveled from Kansai to Shikoku. Now I'm in Matsuyama, the largest city on the island. I plan to cross the Seto Inland Sea to Onomichi and then head to Fukuoka to end my journey. Let's get the show on the road. Now being far from the convenience of Kansai or Tokyo, you start to appreciate how easy it was to get around in the big cities. Here, crossing the sea is no easy task. According to Google, I had to first go to Imabari and take this so-called highway bus, then get off in the middle of nowhere and transfer to a local bus to finally reach Onomichi. It sounds like random info Google collected from the dark corners of the internet, but do I have a choice? No. So Imabari, here I come. It was a very sunny day. The ride from Matsuyama to Imabari was pleasant because it was free. When I got off, the bus station was just outside. I was relieved to see that the bus routes on the map were exactly as foretold. By the way, there is zero English on the route maps. I happen to know a little Japanese and I did some digging on the internet the day before, so I'm not having an extremely hard time figuring out what ticket to buy or where to go. But if you don't know Japanese at all, it could be somewhat of a problem. I'm not sure how much Google Translate will help here. You know what, I'm gonna try it right now. Would you look at that? It's actually doing a pretty good job. But again, if you are planning to come here, you should be aware of the potential greater language barrier. Ticket in hand, I hopped on my bus. The view along the Shimanami Kaido was breathtaking, with islands dotting the sea and bridges stretching into the distance. It was phenomenal. By the way, did I mention I had to transfer in the middle of nowhere? Yep, it's exactly as it sounds. I had to go off the beaten path, get past a door with a bore warning sign, go under the highway, and get onto a side road for the transfer. And this is my bus stop. Yeah, I was really starting to get worried. I thought there was no way Google Maps could have the bus info from this strip of paper. And it was indeed off by 20 minutes. Then I realized that I was on the wrong side of the road. Google Maps information was accurate down to the minute. It's a miracle how they managed to do this, but I'm not complaining. After patiently waiting, the bus finally came. It takes only cash. You just know it's gonna be good. Arriving in Onomichi, I found it to be a charming little town, though I wasn't blown away just yet. The clouds were rolling in and my stomach was rumbling, so I went to get food. I headed towards a famous ramen shop that serves local Onomichi ramen, and got inside after a short wait. I ordered an extravagant bowl of Onomichi ramen with tons of meat and a rice bowl topped with raw eggs, spring onion and these little fish. The soup of the ramen has a nice flavor of fish stock on top of the soy sauce. It's nothing mind-blowing, but it was homey and filling. Nearby, there was an apparently very famous rice bowl topping shop, with a father cat mascot that invites you for a drink in the local dialect. With a full belly and the clouds parting, I set out to explore the city. Onomichi is sandwiched between mountains and sea, with many temples begging to be explored. I decided to visit the Senkoji Temple, which is built on top of the mountain. On my way, I walked past the Senkoji Temple front railway crossing, and this is when I started to realize Onomichi could very well become my favorite city in Japan. You see, Onomichi is unassuming. There are no shiny skyscrapers what I do? or a billion tori gates what I do? as a spectacular centerpiece, yet there is beauty to be found at every corner. You'll understand this as we go. To get to the temple, I had to take the ropeway. I could have climbed my way up, but on a scorching hot day like this, that would be pure torture. Ropeways are always a win. Exiting the cable car, I was greeted by a view unlike any other. The inland sea sprawled out before me, with the Onomichi Bridge in the distance. It was like stepping into a scene from a Ghibli film. If this isn't spectacular, I don't know what is. Did I just say that Onomichi is unassuming? 
I don't think that's true anymore. Also, check out this furry little dude getting so comfortable here in his very own bowl. The ropeway actually took me to the observation deck on top of the mountain. I enjoyed the view so much, but the sun was burning, I could only get a quick glance. From there, it was just a few steps down to the temple. The bell here is said to be heard across the whole city. The view here is still extremely gorgeous. I just can't get enough of it. So I sat down and stayed here for a good half an hour just to take it all in and relax. One thing I love about Onomichi is that it wasn't so overcrowded with tourists. There are tourists, but the overall experience is a lot more peaceful. After my break it was near dusk, so I started my descent. The city took on a warm glow, and I wondered when these furry little pals would go home for dinner. Only recently did I know that Onomichi is well known for having tons of cats. And now that I think about it, they were indeed everywhere. It's just heartwarming to see these little fur balls enjoying themselves in the setting sun against a gorgeous backdrop. As a cat lover, it's yet another reason to recommend Onomichi to anyone plans to visit Japan. Beyond the feline inhabitants, the journey downward was enchanting. Watching the train slowly make its way across the town in the distance was a zen experience. Words failed to capture the feeling, and my camera didn't do it justice. You'll just have to experience it for yourself. As evening approached, I checked into my hostel and freshened up before going out for dinner. The check-in process was entirely automated, which, combined with the near-empty public area, gives off a surreal vibe. But the atmosphere was welcoming, and the facilities are all spotless, just like every other place I've stayed at before Onomichi. After the shower, I set off to grab a bite to eat. The night in a small town like Onomichi falls quickly. When the sun goes down, the streets just magically empty themselves. I walked into an izakaya that serves chicken dishes just around the corner. The place was rather small, and there were already a few Japanese people eating. The owner of the place was a friendly middle-aged man, and he greeted me when I entered. Knowing that I don't speak Japanese that well, he took out a translator device from a drawer so I could have conversations with him as well as the other guests. I'm usually a very shy person, but the Japanese people in the room were really nice and friendly, and they welcomed me into their conversation. We talked about where we are from, what we do, and what places I have visited in Japan. So in the room, we have a Japan tourist from Hiroshima, and a local ramen shop owner lady, with her two absolutely jack sons, who are professional judo athletes. They were trying their best to speak English while I was struggling to make up full sentences in my bare-bones Japanese. We all had a great time. After a second beer, I thanked the owner for the delicious meal and prepared to leave. I told him that I still need to head to Fukuoka tomorrow, so I can't get too crazy. But then it struck me. Before I started this journey, I thought that if you have explored Kansai quite extensively, you'd become hard to impress. You've seen the historical serenity of Kyoto, the bustling metropolis of Osaka, the poetic coexistence of men and nature in Nara. Everything from now on would only be a rearrangement of what you've already witnessed, only in a different place. But there can be more than that. I love traveling because it breaks you out of your normal day-to-day -day cycle and casts you into a world not of your own. Don't get me wrong, all of the cities I've mentioned above are amazing, but the experiences in the cities are like ticking off items on a checklist. You go here, see this, and stop. You have to take a bus and go to the next place and see that and stop again to take a subway. But here there are no pauses in between. You are in the zone this whole time. I can't quite put it into words, but Onomichi just felt special. Now if you've watched the previous episodes, you'd know that since I tried to get the best value from the JR Pass, the past few days were a bit rushed. Now that I've already got more than 100% the value from the pass, I don't want to make the same mistake again. So I said, you know what, I'm not leaving tomorrow. I've enjoyed Onomichi so much, I'll stay for one more day. Thank you for enjoying Onomichi so much, the owner said, and here's another beer. It was cloudy the next morning, but I was excited that I finally got time to properly explore a city a bit more. I went north towards Saikokuji, and it wasn't long before it started to rain. 
I had to seek shelter at another smaller Buddhist temple nearby and wait for the rain to stop. Despite it being extremely humid and me being soaked from the rain and my own sweat, it was a delightful moment. There was absolutely no one around, only me, the temple, and the falling raindrops. After the rain finally stopped, I visited the Saikokuji temple and had to head back to take a shower and get changed. Then I set off again without a specific destination in mind. I resisted the urge to use Google Maps to find the best places to visit. It would make things way too boring. I just wanted to wander around and get lost. And in a small town like this, there's absolutely no problem doing that. The streets of Onomichi felt different on a cloudy day, with a touch of nostalgia, but it's from a memory that I never had. Everything still looked clean and tidy, and it was fun to just walk around. The central shopping street had some surprisingly fancy-looking cafes and shops. I had no idea what kind of shop this is. It's just a really pretty neon banner. And there are more cats doing their cat things. I don't want to bore you to death by continuing to sing the praises of Onomichi. Alas, I've been doing that for the past five minutes, but you really had to be here to understand. My impression of Japan has always been heavily influenced by Ghibli movies and anime, and Onomichi to me is the authentic Japan experience. I have no regrets. This is the last day of my trip. Looking back, it has been such a fantastic journey. I covered so much distance, had so many different experiences, and the cherry on top, it was cheap. The Seto Uchi Area Pass has been both a blessing and a curse. It allowed me to move freely in Japan, but at the same time it was messing with my travel planning quite a bit. The total value I got from the 19,000 yen pass was 36,560 yen, which is pretty darn good. And this is after I've cut my trip short and didn't visit Fukuoka. So the pass has great savings potential, and it remains, in my opinion, one of the best JR passes you can buy after the general price increase. But I will again suggest those who wants to buy a JR pass to not plan your trip just to get the best value. You should always plan your trip to have a good time, and then think about value. Okay guys, I guess that's it for my trip to Seto Uchi. Making this series has been so much fun, and I would like to thank you all for tagging along with me on this ride. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.